Decomposition Products, Chapter 11. So we're going to look at amines and amides, talk about uh, some of the first organic compounds that were ever synthesized. So amines uh, can be uh, different forms, and so the simplest one that has three hydrogens coming off of that nitrogen, like your ammonia, in a primary where you've got at least one R group. Uh, secondary amines got two R groups coming off that nitrogen, and tertiary's got three. So their class, classic Lewis base, um, Lewis bases, which means they donate electrons, and then we went over that in chapter six. So your simplest is going to be methylamine, and if you're a Breaking Bad fan, then you know that's what Walt and Jesse were after, trying to make that methylamine. So here we have that reaction to make that methylamine. So you get the phenylacetic acid reacting with the base, uh, reductive animation, you got your Sudafed, made it to where you couldn't go to the drugstore and purchase it without being having to show your driver's license and keep up with the number of times that you purchase it like you were a drug a drug dealer yourself. So anyway, it goes through this series of reactions till you end up with that uh, methylamine. So um, again, we're going to be looking at secondary amines. So you've got uh, A couple that are shown here, dimethylamine and diphenylamine. So that diphenylamine is going to be what uh, keeps apples from getting brown spots and the dimethylamine is going to be an attractant for insects such as boll weevils and cockroaches. has a pheromone that attracts those and then you've got your tertiary amines and they're going to have that distinctive fishy odor and we're going to see that in um, the decomposition reaction where things are decaying. Um, and here at the bottom, you've got that tri triethylamine, which is a common industrial base. So it's the amine, or an amine is one of the things that is uh, definitely going to give you that uh, smell of death, uh, the amine and sulfur containing compounds together, give us that. And uh, amine decomposition products are referred to as tomines. And they were found in uh, decaying plants and animals and were thought to be the cause of food poisoning, but they're just the product of that uh, decomposition of that, that material. So uh, in time, uh, we learned that microorganisms and spool food is what causes the sickness, not uh, the decay of the plant or animal matter. But to this day, tomain po poisoning persists to be uh, referred to as food poisoning. So amines are going to be bases. Remember, we talked about bases and, and acids. So the basicity of an amine is partially dictated by that R group. It's bonded to that nitrogen. Free ammonia is going to be one of the products that you have when something decomposes, goes through decomposition reaction. So uh, in advance, decomposition ammonia will interfere with preservatives such as aldehydes and increasing preservative demand. So over to overcome this, then we have to interfere with that reaction. So you have to use a more highly concentrated embalming solution, and so you're gonna to have to prepare that uh, as the embalmer. So surfacants are going to aid in penetration of preservatives and other chemicals so that it can enter the tissue cells. So they work by reducing the surface tension of the water, and they have both polar head and a hydrophobic tail. So they've got an end that seeks the water, that's the polar end, and the hydrophobic tail 
the one that does not like water, it's going to be a um, nonpolar in. Things that are nonpolar would be soluble in it. So amines are going to be have four different organic substituents. Amines are capable of having polar head and hydrophobic tail, which make them really good spicants. Benzoconium chloride is uh, going to be uh, used in a lot of uh, for a lot of purposes, such as uh, the uh, antiseptic and disinfecting uh, purposes. So uh, it dissolves the cell walls, making it especially good as a surfacant. Here we have some heterocyclic amine, so it forms um, in a circle or as close to a circle as, as you, can, you can get here. We've got five carbons making this pyrrole, so it's a five carbon structure. Uh, it has a sub, it's important because it's the subunit of hemi, so that's uh, one of the major components of hemoglobin and myoglobin. Endole uh, are bicyclic, so you've got two cyclic structures that are attached to one another. Um, the endole imparts some of the foulest odors uh, in decomposition and in poop. So uh, it's a main feature of the amino acid tryptophan. Also, tryptophan is the precursor of serotonin and, and that is the um, neurotransmitter that is going to give us the feelings of well-being and happiness and is found in antidepressant medication. Skatol is uh, the product of the protein decomposition. So you, when you have a protein that's breaking down, then you're going to uh, have a skatol as one of the products. So in low concentrations, believe it or not, they use it in popular perfumes, even though it has, it is found in uh, poop and gives helps give it the smell that poop has. So. Uh, Amidazole is a five-membered uh, hydrocyclic ring, and so it's going to have two amines. So you've got two nitrogens that are uh, involved in that ring. So they're important in uh, histamine. So uh, histamine is going to cause inflammation, so antihistamines are going to uh, prevent that inflammation from occurring. Pyridine is also in a ring, and this time we've got six uh, membered ring, and the nitrogen is involved in, in the part, part of that ring. So it is a constituent of B12, and so it, if you don't get enough B12, then you can have uh, starvation, mouth lesions, anemia, headaches, and apathy. Here you have uh, pyrimidine, which is a constituent of thymine or vitamin B1. It is a constituent of uh, nucleotides that are going to make up our DNA and RNA. Uh, purine is a fused combination of amidazole, amidazole and pyrimidine. So of the major interest because of most abundant nitrogen containing heterocycle in nature. So we see that in nature a lot. And again, it is a building block for both DNA and RNA. Amides um, are pictured here. You have uh, the different scenarios, again, for primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, for the amides, they can be those formats just like the amines. Uh, amides are prepared from carboxylic acids and amines.
So we act together and get that uh, amide. So um, dimethyl formamide has a low molecular weight, high boiling point. So it um, is easily soluble and therefore widely used in pharmaceutical industry. Uh, peptides, uh, amides, uh, they're part of the uh, polypeptides and proteins. Carbamide, so that's where you've got two amine groups attached to a carbonyl group. And here's your carbonyl group. And here you have uh, urea. This is urea. And urea is um, of interest to organic chemistry because it was one of the first materials that was ever synthesized. And so urea is uh, found in, in urine. So it's formed in the liver by combining ammonia and CO2, and it interferes with embalming, and, and uh, we uh, talked about how it can interfere in embalming when we were looking at chapter nine. So uh, up until 1828, it was believed that only living organisms could produce organic compounds. Organic compounds have to come from living uh, plants and animals, uh, living organisms. So it wasn't until um, Friedrich Wohler was able to uh, convert uh, or be able to, he was able to synthesize uh, the urea, urea, which is a component of uh, urine. And so before that point, it was not believed that you could uh, make an organic compound without it going through an actual uh, living being. So uh, that opened up the gates for lots of different areas in, in chemistry related fields. Um, medicine benefited a lot. And as you've seen, as we have been going through our organic chemistry study, there are a number of organic solutions that are of great importance for funeral services that would not be possible if Voller had not made this discovery.